This episode of Bogan's Guide to Wine is brought to you by the Bogan's Guide to Wine merch store. Get it on ya. G'day guys, welcome to a new episode of Bogan's Guide to Wine. I'm Sampy with... I'm Valleys. And I'm Griever. And we are going to be doing something a bit different today guys. We are going to be having a gin instead of a uh, instead of a wine today. Oh yeah. Love now, Mother's Ruin. Now this gin has come from the gang at Wild Brumby. We've done Wild Brumby on the show before when we did their chilli snaps. I believe me and Lurch Ooh. poured chilli snaps over a bunch of oysters and... Ooh. It was to throw a match on. It was to could, <laughs> very, very like could have, mate. It would have been a flambéed oysters. Um, so, anyway, so these guys knocking out, uh, they're knocking out a gin. They do a nice uh, vodka, which I've been enjoying with my uh, white Russians and uh, <laughs> espresso martinis. But today we're doing the gin. They do, they do one we had, we tasted last night, didn't we, Fraser? The yep. uh, strawberry sort of infused or almost like a rose yeah. gin. Yeah. That's kind of different. It was. But today we're doing the award winning gin from Ta-da. Wild Brumby. Now, these guys are from the uh, Snowy Mountains. So, this is 100% Yeehaw. Australian. Oh, that's the Brumby reference. There you go. So, uh, you ready for a bash? Absolutely. Yep. All right, label Nazi. Yes, what do you think label about? Label Nazi. Okay. What do you think about this label? I actually do love it. I love how the N is not actually a complete N. Yeah. They've done something different with it. I don't understand the pattern in the background. The paisley. The paisley, paisley. I don't get. But hey, there's room for improvement. I no, don't. Not a paisley fan. No. I got a suit made recently and had all paisley put in yeah, inside. Yeah, well, were you? Are paisley. not fashionable. <laughs> Still at the print. I don't like people that have to brag about what they've won on their bottle. Let me choose well, I'm for with myself. You. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not really a, I'm a, not a big a one on. If anything, when I see that, I think. He's a wanker. A wanker. So I think but, but, that. But, but, gin, but, but you've also got to read it. So a lot of it could be the Chapman Valley Wine Festival yeah, and they want to go off this. Still, but this here, this here is the. Melbourne International Spirit Competition, gold winner. So... Let me taste it for myself. I don't give a crap if you want something somewhere. I give a crap about my taste buds. What about you, Froze? What do you think about the labelling of this? Is well, that something you'll pick off the shelf? I was conversing with the spirits after a few of these last night, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, do you like the labelling? Oh, look, I don't know. I'm a bit past with a bit of paisley. A bit of paisley. Yeah. I was born in the 60s. I'll paisley admit, it was big in the 60s. When I opened it up, I was very impressed. I like the shape of the bottle. The yeah. bottle, you... I love the bottle. The yeah. bottle shape is amazing. I love the colour. I love everything about the bottle. I don't like the paste. Not a gin drinker because I've just no gin from what I've seen. It's just the long skinny things. If I saw this in a bottle, I would definitely grip, put my hand on that before I grab something else. Not knowing what I'm looking at. When uh, I see that bottle, I see rum. Maybe that's, that's shape, what, maybe, rum maybe that's why I want to grab it. And it's that's what it attracts me. I love the new spicy rums that are coming out. Mm-hmm. And also I see a collector bottle. I like collecting bottles. I think bottles to me are attractive and sexy. It's a sexy bottle. It says to me, you know how to drink. Well, drink me. And this actually makes it a more collectible sort of thing because you've got a little, almost looks handwritten there. Yeah. Is, I, I thought it was a numbered bottle, but it's not because this is a, a batch number. It's batch uh, number 36. I believe that gin should be wider and thinner and should be gin really in bold letters i do like the fact that it's in silver it looks like it's like actually real silver it's not a fake one if it's get gone. rid of the parsley we don't need it it's crap parsley. is it parsley oh well, shit i've got my words wrong again <laughs> all right well it's not going to be a bit of short discussion here how's the color look to you machine oil machine oil <laughs> It's clear. It's, it's totally gin. clear. It's, it's alcohol. It does have this. It doesn't look like water though, does it? It looks. It's got a bit of a oily sort of mm. depth to okay, it. Okay, so if you Vis- look, viscosity. you're talking wine. I love the way it dances. See the tannins. Gin has tannins, just like wine does. So you can actually see, and from a gin lover, you can actually see. See it? 
There's the angel tears. But that, that's not tannins though, is it? That's... But it's not, but it tells you the amount of alcohol. Okay, so yeah. we'll, take a, we'll take a punt. What do you reckon the alcohol content is on that? Better be 50%. <laughs> This is a new one for me. I'd look because we I'd, obviously alcohol uh, spirits are a lot different to um, wine. So I think it would be punt. something like eighteen percent. Eighteen. I would yeah. have gone more like thirty-six. I was thinking forty. I think it's a forty. Let's have a little bit of a look at this. It's forty percent alcohol. Yeah, smell of this all the time. I'm drinking here. I'm drinking. <laughs> well, once again, I'm, 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 it's, if, it has, if I haven't pointed out already, I'm not a, a gin drinker generally. And the ones that I have had generally punch you in the face a bit more than this. This is a lot, lot more accessible, a bit more subtle. I this think. is beautiful. It, it smells, it's got some really nice, what do you call it, aromatics mm -hmm. coming through. The, mm. But well, it smells kind of Australian still. It, does, it yeah. sort of has the. Yeah, well, I can smell the berries. I can oh, smell berries. Poof, the right berries, there. but I can't smell that high percentile. Sometimes with really bad gins, what they do is they put very little aromatics in it, and they put a lot of alcohol, and they try to pass it off as a gin. Mm -hmm. The best gins is the ones that actually really think about the aromatics and put a bit of alcohol in it and let it ferment. Mm -hmm. This is a bloody good gin. Have a go. Yum. <laughs> okay, wait a sec. Okay. Bang. Okay, that's how you do it. Um, thoughts, people? It okay. pops. It has not only berries in my mouth, I am tasting. I sound like a real dick right now. You can actually taste a garden. There's I really like, it doesn't hit you in a sense that you're going, oh, I need to have some water right now because I've got a bad aftertaste. Mm. It actually tastes like you're experiencing a garden. There's, the aromatics are on point, the alcohol is at the right level to match the aromatics, and I just can't fault it. I, I, I find it, I, I, once again, not a gin drinker, the mm. gins I've had in the past, I, I find them, I found them a lot more punchy. Yep. But that's what I look for in a wine. I don't know if I really want that in a gin. No, I prefer something that's, you know, quite delicate. But then I'm a martini maker. So, you know, you don't <laughs> want to overpower your martini. So I'm, I'm loving this. It, you get that, you get that, you know, little bit of an alcohol burn, but it's nice. It's not, yeah. it's not break fluidy. It's not, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's not apparent. It's very easy I'm to getting drink a bit straight. of citrus. Subtle. A lot of citrus coming through, uh, yeah. isn't it? And perhaps even a bit yes. of vanilla. Vanilla. Okay, no. that's oh yeah, I like. actually taste that. On the nose that. or on the palate? No, on the palate. On the palate. On the palate. Not on the nose. Not immediately. Oh. Kind of. Well, it's got traces of that. Well, yeah, like we say on the show a lot, suggestions are the wonderful thing, and yeah, I, you can I find would, that vanilla once you start looking. I for would it. have to say that I would have that in my pantry to make a martini. Well, speaking of martinis. We got the martini expert here. So shall we bang out a martini or two? Let's bang out a martini or two. All right, Fred, tell us how we make a martini, mate. All right, well, I always do five parts gin. Five parts gin. Two, uh, one part vermouth. Yeah. And how many drinks does that make? Uh, well, that'll make two, so I'm going to up it. To seven. To, uh, to make three. Okay. So I'm putting in seven and a half of gin. I'll just make an eight. No. No? You don't mess with your measures, man. Oh, okay. Right it took on. me a year to learn alchemist. this. Alchemist. He's an alchemist now. It's, you know. Now he just, knows what he's doing. He's the Scotsman. Oh, I'll tell you. So we so have three shots of that on So me. you mix them no, the no, just one shot. in with right, the gin. Right. One of them and one of them. I was that's, told that so you that's five swish to the one. glass. Well, there's, look, there's an old joke. If you're ever lost, you? In, or if you ever go into the, say the Antarctic, going to the Antarctic, you should always take a very, very tiny uh, uh, cocktail shaker, a small amount of gin and vermouth. 
And if you get lost, you start making a martini and someone will step out from behind the nearest tree and say, that's not how you make a martini. (laughs) (laughs) That'll be me. (laughs) That'll be me. Because... I'm an old joke. (laughs) Many, many... I must admit, I am a great fan of Frank Morehouse, an Australian uh, author, and he has written an entire book about the martini. Okay. He talks about the gin, he talks about the vermouth, Noali Pratt we're using on this occasion, it's French vermouth. A very beautiful vermouth. Oh, why, why, very superior why are we product. using, what's the normal stuff you find in the bottle though? Cinzano. Cinzano. I find, it, I find that very overpowering. For a martini, the martini is a very delicate drink mm-hmm. and you do want... Can I ask a delicate sneaky question? Material. Where's the olives? Right in that container over there, my dear. Thank you, you very like much, because uh, we can't have one of these. table gnome and assist. So I like three olives in mine, oh, well, go because go I go. am an olive lover. Oh, I'm boy, Italian, boy. and we like that stuff. Is they're not unpitted? You got pitted olives? I've got pitted olives. But honestly, Jesus, what the hell are you going on about? I have so a friend how many, who keeps his pits in his coat pocket and only empties it once a month. How many olives would you like? Two olives. Two for me, I think. Thank and you. And don't show because Fraser got it wrong. You can't be in there. You don't look stylish. No, no, you've got How many do you it. want? See? Just see, a toothpick? See? Oh, uh, one. I'm to a, right, I'm you're a wrong. Purist. Oh, see, I you're see. a purist. I'm a purist. I'm a purist. Very He's a purist. Man. Now, All the right. olive, the olive is to give the drink an axis, apparently. Which sounds really wanky to me. An axis. No, the olive is actually to take away Choo-choo. that bite. So the salt takes away from that impurity that you feel sometimes with a jeep. I know this, I read about it. Oh, well, let's just bang straight in and see how this small bumby gin turns into a martini. It's bloody good. This isn't Jason. <sighs> Look, I must admit, I had an opinion before I even drank it, and that's. I thought this was going to be too overpowering for the martini, yeah. and I thought it would mess with the dynamics. But the dynamics is a big word. Um, but no, it really works. It's, really works. It's, this is uh, once again falls into that damn dangerous category oh, yeah. because this is uh, it's three drinks and an eyedropper. Three drinks and eyedropper. The worst part about this drink is the fact that I have to actually eat an olive around the pips, so I look unstylish. Oh, God, enough with the pips, woman. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fraser. But it's but it tastes but it, it's um, it's amazing. I love it. I've had I've had a handful of martinis in my time, and they can be uh, almost medicinal. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get the camera when you do that. You no, know, they can almost be medicinal. But this is uh, this is good. This is smooth. It's good. It's I am done. giving it ten out of this ten. This is rocking my. Stuff. I know we're probably not supposed to vote now, but I'm loving this one. Well, it's been a long episode since we've done the sexual. Slab. So, let's tie this up. Wild Brumby Gin, guys and gals. Are we? What are you going to rate this out of ten? Um, look, it's an Australian product. I'm proud to be Australian and proud to call myself a gin drinking Australian. So I'm going to have to give it an eight and a half. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I know nothing about <laughs> gin, um, but I find it's very easy to drink. Uh, Easily accessible. Love the fact it's made by mm. some Aussies and the, oh, yes. uh, the uh, Snowy Mountains. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to go away uh, uneducated. Eight, eight and a half. I'm, yeah, mm. I'll follow your lead. How about you? Okay, as a massive gin lover, yes, mother's ruin. I don't look after my children. I love the gin. I'm only a golden child, by the way. I'm giving it a nine point five. Oh, snap! It's that good, Ooh. eh, you reckon? I think it is an awesome gin. It's palatable, it's light, it doesn't make you feel afraid for the second sip. Mm-hmm. It makes you want to go in for the second sip. Dangerous. It's yeah. too easy to drink. Mm. Very good to drink mm. and I'm in love with it. And I can't wait to go and find it and purchase a bottle for myself. There you go. Awesome. And to do that, visit this webpage right here. <laughs> <laughs> I will be buying a bottle of oh, Jason. <laughs> So, wrapping it up guys, till next time, this has been Bogan Sky Twine. If you get the opportunity, you'll just hunt this sucker down if you're a drink, gin drinker, because it's obviously good stuff. It is good stuff. Woo-hoo. Till next time, this has been Bogan Sky Twine. Get it get in. Get it in, yeah. yeah.
Now you can rock your very own Bogan's Guide to Wine t-shirt. Visit bogansguidetowine.com.au. Get it on ya.